the Dorothy Lamb Chair in Special Education. Um, good morning. Well, I um, just learned that I, in fact, have the chair <laughs> late last week. Um, so you'll have to forgive me if my vision is a little less formed than uh, maybe some of the others. But I do want to say how um, thrilled I am to have this opportunity and uh, how much I look forward to uh, fulfilling the mandate um, of the Dorothy Lamb chair. Um, my work. Uh, over the last 20 years, and I think for the foreseeable future, really focuses on bridging research and practice, um, and particularly focusing on children's development as self-regulating learners. Um, so the fit with the Dorothy Lamb just seemed perfect for me in the sense that the uh, expressed mandate for the chair is to advance knowledge and improve practice in education. So those two things, but especially for learners who struggle in school, who have exceptional uh, learning needs. So that um, will also be my focus. Oops. Somehow, I've got it upside down, maybe that's why. <laughs> I'm not the chair in technology. <laughs> <laughs> So if I had time, I would put you through a little bit of an exercise, which I usually do if I'm working with teachers or, or community groups. I would say, this is Lucy, this is my niece, and you can see that she's engaged in all kinds of things, and I've got her kind of from her first day in kindergarten, first day in grade one, and now this year she entered grade two. And I usually ask teachers, so what do you think is the best predictor of the long-term outcomes for Lucy? in terms of her learning and life. And of course, I'm not going to let you answer that because that would take too much time. But teachers usually say things like the support she has from her family, um, whether she is doing well in terms of learning to read and write and all of that. But they also point to things like following directions, being able to attend um, well in school, being able to work independently and with others. Um, being able to relate well to adults, teachers, peers. Um, those are the things that teachers say almost are more important than these other kinds of things that we can associate with school, like academics. And later, when I talk to uh, teachers who are working with youth who maybe have not succeeded in school, and I ask them, so what um, do you think is the cause of the difficulty? Again, they almost never go directly to the academics. They almost always refer to these more what we would associate as being kind of life skills and interpersonal skills and so on. So self-regulation is associated with all of those things. Uh, Self-regulating learners are able to attend, they relate well to others, they're able to work independently as well as in, in groups. And so what we're finding, um, there's an increasing uh, body of evidence spanning uh, decades now and in almost all of the social sciences and behavioral um, study <coughs> fields indicating that self-regulation is critical for success in learning and life. So, Self-regulation as, as my lens, um, what is it? Uh, it, in general, is the ability to control thoughts and actions to meet goals and respond to environmental demands. So broadly speaking, that is what it is. And what do we know about it? Well, we know it involves metacognition, so self-awareness, motivation, that kind of will, um, not just skill, and strategic action. It's reflected in 21st century learning goals, which emphasize the need for learners in this day and age to be adaptive, to be flexible, to be able to work in groups, to be able to solve problems. It's essential for success in learning in life. In fact, there's data to show that um, it's a better predictor of young children's success going forward in school than traditional measures of IQ, or than their ability to read or do math um, when they enter school. Um, it's a significant source of achievement differences uh, among students. So we know that some groups of students have difficulty in their development of self-regulation. 
children with learning disabilities, children with attention deficit disorders, children who experience traumatic brain um, uh, disorders. Um, lots of different students have difficulties with this. Um, but the good news is it's a developmental process, it's malleable, and so we can do something about it. And that has been the emphasis of my work, and I have to say that my work is integrally uh, connected with Deb Butler's work. We are kind of a team here at uh, UBC, um, and we have been working not only to understand um, self-regulating development in students, but also to work with teachers to help them develop SRL promoting practices. Um, finally, self-regulation supports personal and social forms of learning. So in terms of um, my agenda, I've put up this chart that kind of summarizes um, the, the different areas that I um, have been working in and probably will continue to work in um, as I move forward with the, the Dorothy Lamb agenda. Um, you can see that kind of what I have tried to do is really integrate my research, teaching, and community engagement. Um, and I think that is kind of a significant piece of the Dorothy Lamb Chair mandate. So I've been, and, and within those foci, I've also tried to do early years prevention, um, youth prevention and intervention, because I think um, early intervention is important, but I think lots of the, the groups that I have been um, supporting need ongoing attention as well. And then, of course, Deb and I have been working uh, together in the pre-service and in-service teacher development and systems change. So I'm not going to describe everything in this table. Um, I might just uh, point out a couple of things that we're quite uh, proud of. Each year, we have hosted a self-regulation-related learning institute in the summer here at UBC with support from the PDCE. And uh, this summer, we had over 100 teachers um, coming from all over British Columbia, um, a little few from Alberta and the Yukon. Um, and so that is uh, expanding. And this summer, we're going to do that institute as well as one with Inclusion BC. Um, so we're kind of having that reach um, to teachers and also uh, to the community. I also want to emphasize that here at UBC in our teaching, like Shelley, we have um, originated a, a, a concentration on self-regulated learning, but also we are launching in the special education area uh, supporting inclusive education um, concentration. And of course we have a learning disabilities concentration. And all of the students in those concentrations get some coursework, some um, instruction about self-regulated learning. And so they um, certainly come together around that kind of topic. Um, we have an undergraduate themed cohort like the SEL um, with a focus on self-regulated learning and also one at the graduate uh, program and an off-campus um, program that enrolls just teachers um, from different districts who have that as their focus. I want to just take a minute to describe one study, um, and in fact, uh, this morning I just uh, submitted a shirk proposal um, <laughs> that, uh, if it gets funded, will certainly um, support a great deal of, of the work that I have been doing with the early um, uh, years. And so I want to talk about a study that I have going in Delta School District that involves um, children that we are referring to as the kindergarten cohort. Um, and these, this is a group of children who were in kindergarten in the spring of 2014 and are currently enrolled in grade two. Um, there are 208 of them and uh, teachers have identified uh, a subset of those students as being what we call them at risk in their development of self-regulation. So we're interested in watching what happens for those children. Um, we're looking at not only characteristics within children but also characteristics of the context, the classrooms that they're in and how over time their experiences in school can um, shift, if you will, their trajectories. And so um, oftentimes in kindergarten, you know, if you have an at-risk group, that group is going to change over the period of time. So we imagine that the membership in that group is unstable at this point. Um, we hope it is, and uh, um, we will be looking to see how that works. 
We have 50 uh, plus teachers who are involved. We're just kind of settling on who's involved this year um, in seven schools in Delta. And uh, the, um, I think I've kind of said how we're following them. The <coughs> teachers are really partners in the research. And so teachers are members of learning teams and learning teams come together to study self-regulated learning. Um, I am facilitating those learning teams uh, along with uh, my research um, team, students, and so on. We also are in classrooms between learning team meetings. So teachers meet in learning teams three times during the year. We're in classrooms interleaved between that time and supporting their development of professional practices associated with self-regulation. And then, of course, the teachers are contributing to the data collection um, with the students. So we're really all working together to try and understand um, this phenomenon. Um, I think that is about where I can stop now. I don't know how I've probably taken up enough of my time. Um, the grant that I've just submitted will enable us, if funded, to follow this cohort in grades three through six. And we'll also be adding another um, site at McGill University, Montreal. We have a colleague coming on the grant, and also at Cambridge University in the UK. Um, so we are keeping fingers crossed that that will be funded and that we can expand this uh, research in some really important and interesting ways. Okay. Thank you. And that's my team. <laughs> Questions for Dr. Perry? Joanne, thanks for the presentation. Um, I, I wondered about uh, in the, the early years, uh, many Aboriginal children are, I think, disproportionately labeled in various ways um, and often thought of as at risk. So I wondered in your research, are, are there plans to work with Aboriginal community groups? Uh, in relation to um, self-regulated learning, because I think what you, you're, you're putting forward is is very important, and I think would work well. And of course, that relates to some of the other uh, professorships too. But um, uh, since you're up, up Nancy, and I'm <laughs> up, you know, about this, especially since there are so many uh, of the Aboriginal population are are children, you know, generally. So yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for the question. And I have to say that um, Aboriginal ways of knowing and that are, is not a particular expertise of mine, so I'm not going to claim to have all the answers in that um, instance. But I will point to um, Ms. Nikki Yee, who is part of my uh, research team, who has a, very much an interest in linking um, self SRL promoting practices with the uh, First Peoples Principles of Learning. She's really made that connection and it's part of her dissertation research. Um, so certainly, um, we members of our team are interested in that and uh, connecting to that. And we just submitted, in fact, a chapter for the handbook of um, positive uh, development of minority learners in which we looked at um, in the Canadian context who are our minority learners we focused on um, children who are immigrants um, English language learners and also Aboriginal um, children and we were advancing this notion that if we were to focus on some of these SRL promoting practices which include giving kids choices giving them a sense of control over outcomes helping them to be more self-aware um, helping them to work more socially and um, uh, kind of interrelatedly, um, that, that that would be helpful to lots of kids in an, in an inclusive and diverse um, classroom. So we're working on that. It's new. There's not a lot of work um, relating self-regulation in minority populations, so there's work to be done. Yeah? yeah Thank I think it would be... Uh, wonderful to be able to work with various organizations. They can bring in the, the cultural ways of knowing, but I yeah. think with your expertise on self-regulated learning, there's a way to bring both together. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions for Nancy? Yeah. 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 Y